Hello there YouTube. This is the finished product. There's our on and off knob. These screws go through here through the switch and into the plastic box. Normally on a wall you'd have your face plate screws. These are the ones that hold your outlet into the box. So they go through that inside. I don't know if I mentioned that. This does rub a little bit up here. You'll hear it in time. I'm sure it will wear down. I may have to put some weight in the box or some rubber feet. It wants to walk around on me. Now we have a variable speed. I tried feeding it like this. Maybe it's had a brand new big blade, but it tends to want to jam. See? But as far as cutting stuff freehanded, get some RPMs here. How much glare we're getting from the lamp. But you get the idea. Then you have the side to sharpen stuff. I have little plastic forces made right here. But I make all kinds of these tools. A lot of welding rod stuff. I make those drivers. I know there's a danger hazard, no guard, stuff like that. Do it at your own risk. Uh, I have hit my knuckle on this before. These are the blades that go into your air cutter. I can't think of the name right now. Rarely seldom run it this high, but I had it on my very X. It's a lot cheaper than a very X. If somebody comes across a sewing machine motor, uh, you have to dig for my videos of mini grinder build. You can hear it rubbing right there. This thing is balanced perfect. I'd recommend always shutting this off with it up so you know, so if it's plugged in, so he doesn't bump the knob or burn out the dimmer thing or something. Okay, now to see the inside. Show how we put that can. We do have pictures of all this. Wiring's all done. It is grounded. This is grounded to here with these screws now. This is grounded. The motor's grounded. So this is all ground. I made sure to scrape the paint off here and actually did a continuity check from the motor. I'll have continuity here, here, here. So it has been checked with the voltage ohm meter. All the wires are tucked over in there. I'm thinking about putting some steel weights down in the bottom here to make it heavier. Maybe some rubber non-stick feet because we don't want this bolted to the bench. We only get it out when we're sharpening something. But I can still have a cardboard box here with all my little pieces in. Like this. This was some kind of spacer I made. Uh, I made a spacer for this. This is your four and a half inch grinder disc when they get small. This is what this is. I have a plastic washer that fits in there that I made. So, I have a box for all that stuff to go down in here. I did put some foil tape over here. If this ever did get full of dust, I could probably cut a hole in here and clean it out and put some foil tape over it. So, it is possible to make this cut out a big hole so you clean, can clean the mess out but the mess is going to end up going down here so you'd have to have some kind of rag or something on here tilted sideways something like that it does get top heavy when you open the lid of course it's not mounted down this is a flimsy little box but this is what I had and I did show the cord always put grommets on your cords I had a little trouble there which I would mentioned earlier I think you know, on the other parts where this was spliced. But there you go. A little mini grinder. Now it's mounted on a box where I got storage in it. I may make something or just put lines for degrees, uh, which I had my protractor in one of the earlier videos. 
cheap plastic one. I have a metal one. I showed it in the first video. If I had something here to make lines, uh, something to lay down there, I may take that metal one and do that. I can reach this. I may cut this off and modify this. Cut it off straight and lay it down here, but you're still going to have to have the center rivet. Or I may just hot glue it because these come apart. I bought this and I do not know how to run this. It's beyond me. I think it's just a cheesy. But if you did get this centered on there, if you did have this centered and square this off, you could set something like this down there and just glue it down. So you have sort of an angle there. I'm no good at sharpening drill bits, but maybe someday I'll learn. I've seen plenty of videos on it from using belt sanders to just a old style grinder to the high dollar diamond stone grinders. So the better stone you have, the better it is. These, I have touched up some drill bits on with these cutter discs. These are pretty cheap too. That's why I made this grinder to use these. And my diamond stones. Bear with me, I'll get them out here. Like this is diamond stone. Just on the edge. I have a tapered one. That's what this arbor was made for. So I do have those. These were about ten dollars at Harbor Freight. It came with one that would go in a drill that was probably half inch wide, five inch diameter stone, uh, which was used up a long time ago. And then these two were in there. This one in a tapered, uh, which I can grab right here, and a tapered. So they was well worth it. I have used these. I have had these probably five or six years. They're only used on drill bits, precise stuff, for what they cost. It's not really the cost. It's you wear them out, you don't have them, you need them. So when I'm going to make a little fine, precise stuff or sharpen something, uh, an awl or making a little pointed tool or something, you see that stuff sparkle, they're worth it. They was worth the $10 because I've had them for five, six years. You just have to take care of them. You can't be grinding big quarter-inch stick piece of steel or something on it. But there you go. Thanks for watching this series. I weighted the box about this speed, which I normally run it. If it sounds too fast, I probably don't run it that fast. Good. Plastic, too. It's really great on plastic. Give a little more speed. thick aluminum, but this stuff you can score it with a chili knife and break it. But, thanks for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed watching this. Maybe I will inspire someone to build something similar. It's, a, it's nice all the wires are tucked off to one side. Now I do have a storage storage part to store blades and stuff in. I won't be losing all my pieces.